Hi friends, Liquidy here, back for another episode of the Travel Gluten Free Podcast. So we're in season nine, episode 12. I'm super excited to bring you this episode because it's how to cook gluten free on vacation. So if you're new to celiac disease or you are just right at this point, you're just too nervous to eat at restaurants, I totally understand that because you can't be in the kitchen watching everybody. And if you've had a recent experience being really sick, that's always a deterrent to go back out and eat at a restaurant unless it is a dedicated gluten free restaurant. And I live in Portland, so there are tons of choices. There's like literally like 40 dedicated gluten-free restaurants in Portland. But I know that's an exception. Like most places might have one if you're lucky. Like Salem, which is an hour south of me, has one dedicated place and it's they only sell donuts. So it's really hard in many cities to find dedicated gluten-free restaurants. So if you're scared to dine out, then definitely check out uh, this podcast and how to um, how to cook gluten-free on vacation. So we're going to jump right in in just one minute. Welcome to the Travel Gluten-Free Podcast, where you can listen in on how to lead a gluten-free lifestyle with more fun and ease. Travel Gluten-Free is like having a best friend by your side to give you the most up-to-date gluten-free traveler information. Let Travel Gluten-Free be your number one source for tips, tricks, and advice you can use to safely navigate your next gluten-free travel adventure. Enjoy food, enjoy travel, and enjoy life. And now, here's your show host, Illiquity. All right, we are back and ready to jump into Season 9, Episode 12 of How to Cook Gluten-Free on Vacation. First of all, you want to stay in a place you want, oh find a place to stay you want to, there's, these are some considerations <laughs> i'm just trying to look at my notes here when you are finding a place to stay when uh, you are going to be cooking for yourself so one thing is that some hotels do have like little mini kitchens in it so you can find a hotel if you prefer hotels that have mini kitchens they are of course going to be a little more expensive make sure you find out what's in the mini kitchen and call the hotel directly don't don't rely on the description especially if it's a third party site like tripadvisor or something that's not the specific website even if i look on this website i always call because so many things have changed uh, in the past 3 years that they may have changed their options and not updated their website. So call ahead to the hotel to find out what they have in their kitchen. If it's just a mini fridge and microwave, um, you can do that because you can go out and find pre-cooked basically TV dinners is what we used to call them in the 80s. <laughs> and just put them in there and cook them up. If you don't want to sit there and make a bunch of stuff on your vacation or you don't want the time or you're just too tired to make anything, you can always just go out to a supermarket and get you know meals, just to dinner and lunch meals to pop in your microwave, which are really easy um, breakfast meals too. Um, but find a place to stay. So does is it a studio? Does it have a fridge? Does it have a microwave? Does it have a mini kitchen? A lot of the RBOs, the, because you have the whole place to yourself, usually have a kitchen. One of the things to just be aware of is the utensils. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You want to make sure that the place you have has a place to cook, has some fridge space. If you're planning on cooking all your meals there. Another thing I found that's really helpful to do when I am eating out and cooking gluten-free is that I will eat breakfast at my VRBO or my my air and then I will pack a lunch because it's really hard. Like, I don't want to break up the middle of my day and drive all the way back and drive all the way out. So I just pack a lunch and find a park or a rest stop to eat my lunch at and then continue on with my vacation. And that's usually pretty easy to do if you're in a city or if you're in, a, in another area. I just uh, find like a local park, like a local town park to sit and eat your lunch, which is super easy and it's already packed. So you don't have to worry about, you know, is this gluten free because you've already made it. That's a really good way to eat out, cook on vacation, gluten free. Um, also find out, does the hotel provide a free breakfast or do they have a restaurant? And I would call the restaurant directly and find out, hey, when you do your free breakfast, like what things you have are going free? Are they safe for people with allergies? And it really depends on the restaurant. Some restaurants uh, do in hotels and some are just completely horrible with it. So you really need to call them ahead of time and find out, ask all the right questions. Do you serve people with celiac disease? Do you serve people with food allergies? What protocols do you have for food allergies when you're serving people in your restaurants? Like, do you have a separate space in your kitchen you make food, al food allergy friendly food for? Most people don't. Most restaurants don't. You know, you never know, you might be able to stumble across that restaurant inside a hotel that does have that feature. Like everything else, some hotel restaurants are better than others at serving uh, allergy friendly food. So you really need to call the restaurant itself in the hotel. Don't 
depend on the front desk people. They have no clue what goes on in their restaurants unless they have food allergies. And every once in a while, you'll find somebody that has food allergies that's eaten at their own restaurant, but I would not depend on front desk help. You definitely need to call the restaurant and talk to a wait staff and or the manager directly, which is your best bet to getting the best information and to see if you would feel comfortable at that restaurant. And if you don't, you may want to pick a different, a different plate, a different hotel if you are going to be eating most of your food there at the restaurant. For breakfast, that is kind of like a really big toss up. Some, they have the buffets, some buffets are safe, some are not. So you need to ask them lots of questions about the buffets. Like one of the things that always gets people that a lot of people don't know about that I didn't know about until two years ago is that scrambled egg. So don't assume anything is just what it is, even bacon and sausage, like sausage and scrambled eggs could have wheat or gluten in them because gluten is an easy filler. With sausage, they stuff like gluten, whatever in the sauce, like wheat as a filling because it's cheap. And so they can make sausage cheaper. With the eggs that you can put pancake batter in it because it makes the eggs fluffier. So just be aware to ask, have somebody come out and ask you, ask them specifically what is gluten-free and with the staff usually at breakfast they're just usually putting it out so it's so hard to find out so you may want to just call the hotel ahead of time and find out from the person who cooks the food what food items in their breakfast buffet are safe and also if you don't feel safe eating at a buffet and you just want to get tea make sure you bring your own breakfast or have your own breakfast food i've done that before where i know the buffet is not a safe place for me to eat and so i'll go down with my husband who can eat everything and i'll just get tea or coffee and i'll bring down my breakfast and i'll eat my breakfast there and then he eats his from the buffet. So lots of different options. I've never had anybody come up to me and complain to me. And if they did, I would say, can you, like, I have multiple food allergies. Can you guarantee that this food is safe? And they're going to say no. And so that ends the conversation right there. <laughs> you have to know right, what words to say and when to say it. We are going to take a break right here, but we come, come back. We're going to talk about some precautions you want to take when you are making food at an air or VRBO or in your hotel to make sure that you are safe when you're eating on vacation. Free friends, it's liquidy. We know that traveling gluten free can be hard, but you know what? It doesn't have to be impossible. You can still travel and be independent, have fun, and be in control of your life. Travel the way you want to, even with celiac disease. I know because I travel extensively several months out of the year with celiac disease. If you want to get started on learning more about how to travel gluten free, grab my free ebook. 10 tips for traveling gluten-free. In my ebook, you're gonna find the basics of traveling gluten-free, from the questions you need to ask when dining out to air travel and cruise travel advice. You're gonna find my top tips that I've learned for my expertise. Get your free ebook today by visiting my newly revamped website, www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com. Go to the bottom of the welcome page where you're going to see the beautiful Caribbean boat picture. Click there and sign up today. Receive your free ebook, which is going to be dropped directly into your inbox. Remember, go to www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com. Go to the bottom of the welcome page and get your free ebook and find out my top tips for traveling safely when you are gluten free. All right, my friends, we're back with part two of um, how to cook gluten-free on vacation. A bit of a shorter episode, but it's going to be short and sweet. It's packed full of value for you, like I always bring every week. One of the things you want to know with when you're eating at an air or you're eating at your place that you're staying at is there's a couple different things you want to know about, especially eating at an Airbnb or a VRBO, especially if you're sharing a space. So if it's an Airbnb, I recently stayed at an air where I was sharing a space with someone, the owner of the Airbnb, it was her house. She had celiac disease. I asked her, Hey, can I just have a shelf in your fridge? To make to put my food and she said sure so ask the owners every owner is different with airbnbs especially if you're sharing a space with someone make sure that the person is comfortable doing that and if they're not you will want to choose another airbnb for sure for personally for me i think moving forward i'm just going to get a vrbo or an airbnb that is only me in it because it's just a lot easier for me to not have to worry about cross-contamination if i'm staying in a place all on my own because one of the things I did not think of when I was at my last stay in Denver was that the person, so the person I was saying was she had celiac disease, but her roommate could eat wheat. And so there was wheat in the refrigerator. And so I had the top shelf. She knew enough to give me the top shelf. So that was really good. But of course, there's still the chance of cross-contamination. So I think moving forward, I personally, for my personal safety, I'm going to just choose a VRB or an air that is me and my family only. And it's not going to be um, other people I'm sharing space with who I don't know 
what their diet is. So with air and VRBOs, one of the things you want to be aware of, you want to cover things either with foil or plastic wrap, um, like your microwave plate, make sure that you take that out and wash it because there could be gluten anywhere. One of the things I always advise people to do is check the silverware drawer because a lot of times there'll be crumbs in there. And if there is, take all the silverware out, wash it, throw it in the dishwasher, wash out the silverware container because that is going to get into your food really easily and you don't want to get cross-contaminated and get sick from crumbs in the silverware drawer. Wash your dishes and plates you're going to use. If you want to bring paper plates and just use those because it's easier and it's more convenient for vacation, that's perfectly fine too. Don't worry about, and you're going to make extra trash on vacation. Make sure that you wash the dishes and plates um, beforehand if you're going to use those. And also another great thing to have on vacation is toaster sleeves. And I will put a link to that in the show notes. So make sure you have toaster sleeves, reusable sandwich bags, and some Tupperware with you. So if there isn't any Tupperware there, or you don't want to use Tupperware there, you can always go to Walmart, any, you know, supermarket and just buy the disposable Tupperware, you know, leave it there when you're done. Like that's an actual bonus for them. And that way you won't have to take it home or throw it in the trash. So you can always use that Tupperware, put it back in the cabinet when you're done. You always also want to know what appliances do they have? Do they have a toaster? Do they have a blender? Do they have a toaster oven? A toaster oven is much safer to cook your toast in because you can put aluminum foil down on that tray to protect your your bread or your toast from some cross contamination but if they have things like you know blenders make sure you wash them out really good and scrub that blender blade because that could have gluten in it as well because people put you know all sorts of things in blenders um so you never know but make sure if it's something with a lot of cracks and crevices like a blender that you take it out and you clean really well and if there's anything you essentially need like a coffee grinder or a coffee mill always check to see that they have that um i have never seen coffee with gluten in it but again you know you never know. I have seen tea with gluten in it. So just be really careful if they have tea in the cabinet, make sure you are a good label reader. The tea that I found that had gluten in it, there was a green tea one time. I can't remember the company. And there was a celestial seasonings holiday tea. I think it was like sugar cookie or something. And they had barley in it. So barley is what's most commonly found in tea. So if there's tea in the cabinet, please label read it and make sure there's no barley in it. I almost poisoned myself with that barley tea bag. And luckily I was like, wait a minute, did I read this at the supermarket? And I did not read the ingredients. And when I did, I just threw out the whole box because it wasn't worth keeping in the cabinet and accidentally forgetting it or my daughter drinking the tea because she also is celiac. Make sure you label read the teas. If they're in there, look at the coffee, look at what's in the cabinet, like check for crumbs in the cabinet too, because that can be a thing. And I know these are all a lot of things to remember, but you know, just generally use your common sense and you know, you want to maybe want to wipe out the cabinet. Um, you don't have to do like a whole spring cleaning thing, but at least do maybe like the plates and definitely the forks and knife area for sure. What what type of appliances like your microwave, fridge and freezer, uh, kitchen, what size microwave, fridge and freezer they have in there? Usually if you're just staying a week and a mini fridge will accommodate, but you definitely want to check because if you have a whole family, you may need something bigger. Next thing is, is do not use wooden utensils because gluten can easily get inside wood and stay there and it's, it's like almost impossible to get it out. Tablecloths or mats that have not been washed. If you have a tablecloth or mat, if it's plastic, you can wipe it down. Um, but if it's fabric, I would avoid using it because that could give you some cross-contamination. Um, any kitchen item that's hard to clean, like we talked before, because that can cause cross-contamination. One of the things you definitely want to do too is if there's a barbecue grill, make sure you are wrapping your stuff in aluminum foil because even if you put it on the bottom shelf or the top shelf, you could get gluten on it. So wrap it in foil and just know that your food is going to take longer to cook. So whoever's cooking the barbecue, ask them to put your food on first. And I always buy new plastic wrap and buy new aluminum foil when I'm out because that plastic wrap and foil could have been used by somebody who is a gluten eater. And so them touching their food and touching that foil it could be cross-contamination. So depending on how sensitive you are, you want to consider that as well. And honestly, it's like another $8 of expense. And personally for me, I'd rather spend another $8 than get sick on my vacation. It's totally worth the investment for me. One of the things that oh, I love to do when I am traveling is if I have the opportunity to go food shopping, especially the first day. And whether that is I rent a car and go to a food store, like before I get to my VRBO or my air or wherever I'm staying, that's optimal. But sometimes like, you know, I'm getting in super late at night and I'm too tired to do that. So I will just do it the next day. But Food shopping in the first one or two days is really important. Try not to buy too much food. That's the thing I always have is I buy too much. So I'm, I always write down like how many days I'm doing there, how many meals am I going to need? And I really try to not get buy too much food. And then I usually try to donate my food. Like if I see a homeless person on the street that I, I didn't use my food, I'll give them my food. Um, so at least it doesn't go to waste. Um, or I can give my host my food too. That also helps. 
places you may not have thought of to get food um, when you're on vacation are farmers markets. They're an amazing place to get some really fresh local foods, vegetables, teas, coffees, all sorts of really good stuff. Um, the local farmers market in Olympia, where I live, they have really great gluten-free granola and some other really good foods that you wouldn't be able to find in supermarkets sometimes. Health food stores, that's an obvious. Um, some supermarkets are better than others at carrying gluten-free food. So usually the higher end supermarkets are better at carrying gluten-free food. Although if you go to a grocery outlet, which is a discount store or a Winco, which sells uh, food a little bit less expensive. Those are also really good places to find gluten-free food, less expensive than you're going to find them other places. One of the other things you want to consider, also TJ Maxx and Home Goods, which is really funny. You never think of those for food, but they have a food aisle and they usually have really good certified gluten-free snacks in there. So definitely check out TJ Maxx and Home Goods. And of course, any local supermarkets, do your uh, deal deals on this ahead of time. Look at what supermarkets are within 10 minutes of the place you're staying and find out which ones have gluten-free food. And you can always call them and say, hey, do you have a good gluten-free food selection? I'm celiac, I have an allergy. And they could probably tell you if they do or not. The other thing you could do too, if you have not considered this, is you can actually order food from Amazon and have it shipped to your VRBO or your air. Um, you can make sure you ask the person ahead of time, like, hey, if I'm shipping food here because I have a food allergy, like, you know, do, is there a door code? Is there something that the Amazon driver is going to need to get in? And where is a good place to tell them to leave it? It might be the front porch. It might be the back porch. It might be the side door. So make sure that you do that ahead of time and that you have the food shipped to you ahead of time which is also another great option that you can do to get safe food while you are traveling. Another place I love to find safe food, it, this is more like snack stuff and everything, but Vitacost, V-I-T-A-C-O-S-T.com, um, it's $49 for free shipping. You can ship anywhere in the U.S. for free. So that's really easy to buy snacks for the week and then just get it shipped right to your place that you're staying for a vacation. Disney also does that with Amazon. So if you are staying at a Disney hotel, I know for sure you can order Amazon and have it shipped directly to you. They'll put it in your room. I believe. You can call Disney for the details on that, but I believe they'll put it directly in your room. They will hold it, I know, at least at a minimum at the front desk. So you can order from Amazon, have it shipped right to your Disney hotel room. Um, and that's super convenient. I love that option. All right, my friends, I hope this is getting you some really good ideas for uh, making gluten-free food on your vacation. Remember, it's all about, you know, learning how to live independently in despite of your celiac disease, because it's all, it's very challenging. You'll definitely have to do some footwork at a time. You'll definitely have to know what to do, but if you know what to do and you can, you know, take the time ahead of time to be an advocate for yourself and get all of those things ready, your vacation will be fabulous. I mean, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> it's like, as my dad said, nothing's guaranteed in life except death and taxes. All of doing that preparation will definitely help you enjoy your trip for sure. All right, my friends, if you have any questions, definitely um, hit me up on my website, travelgluntfreepodcast.com. I'd be glad to help you out. Remember to enjoy food, enjoy travel, and enjoy life. This is Aliquity signing off and I will see you next week. Travel Gluten-Free Podcast is a production of Travel Gluten-Free LLC. Looking for a great way to connect with over 2,000 consumers per month? Contact Aliquity for information on sponsorship levels to boost your business. Subscribe today so you won't miss a single episode of Travel Gluten-Free. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.